All right, now to get started, first thing you will need to do is download your pool table solid part file in this course. Once you do that, go to File Open, or you can go to this folder and hit Open. Find your pool table. Make sure that the file type is set to Solid Part and hit Open. All right, now you can see it's not in the correct position, so we will fix that, but we're not going to worry about that right now. The very first thing we need to do is fix the layers. So we'll go to Layers, and you'll notice it says Default Layer and Surfaces and Wireframe. The default layer has absolutely nothing in it, so if we go ahead and make the other two invisible, you'll see that there is nothing in the default layer. So we're going to leave it current, and we're going to hit OK. Now I'm going to, I could use hotkeys, and we also could do this through the layers with move and copy geometry, but the way I have always done it has been edit, transform, copy a distance of everything visible, and you can use hotkeys for this, 0, 0, 0, hit OK, and I want to copy to layer current and you can also do the number of copies but we're just going to copy one hit OK now if you go back to your layers and deselect these two and hit OK you'll notice it is now on the default layer alright very next thing we need to do is go to the default layer highlight the number and go to rename we're going to rename this op1 and hit OK. So that just stands for Operation 1. Alright, so we are now ready to scale this down to size because as of right now it is too big. So let me hit Escape, Analyze Distance, so Z, D, E, E for endpoint, that endpoint to that endpoint. It's 141 inches. So all you have to do is, at this point, analyze it. We're going to copy this X dimension. So I'm going to hit Control C, hit OK. And I like to do my math in uh, SurfCam. You can use a calculator. But my uh, how you offset a line hotkey-wise is ERCFC. So I like to uh, do my math in that. So I hit ERCFC. And then you're going to take what you want. So I want to make the overall length 6 inches divided by what you measured. And I get 0 .04247. So I'm going to copy that. Hit Escape. Now I'm going to go Edit Transform. So I just went ER. So Edit Transform. I want to move it. I don't want to copy it. I want to scale it, everything visible, and then I'm going to paste it. Hit OK, keyboard, 0, 0, 0. All right. Now if I hit Control-1 or F, oh, well, F doesn't work. It works on most softwares, but Control-1 should zoom in. I was thinking it would do fit, but it just goes to file. So it would be Control-F. That's what that would be. So if I zoom out and I'm away from it, just Control-F fits it to the screen. OK. Anyway, so now if we analyze it, so I'm going to hit Z, D, E, E. Measure that distance. It might be off one thou, one tenth, a couple tenths. Really, in all honesty, that's not going to be that big of a deal when it comes to uh, milling. So you'll have to add compensation on your tool anyway. So here you go. It is now scaled down to size very next thing we need to do is process this. How are we going to go about making this part? We have a few different options on milling this part. The very first thing we could do is from this view right here, we could profile everything, drill the holes, add the pocket in the middle, use the dovetail to cut that angle, and deburr it, then flip it over and start machining out the studs. But when you do that, you're only going to be holding on from here to here. And a lot of the meat roughing out is going to be on this side. So my first thought is, well, can I 
machine it from this view, drill the holes, machine all that, flip it over, and hold on to from here to here to machine this pocket and bring it down to thickness and all of that. Um, when you have a part that looks like this, you also have to keep in mind, is it too tall for your jaws? So we can go and analyze. So if you hit Control-1, analyze this distance from here to here. So it'll be the Y distance is 1 inch. Well, typically the jaws on the mill are around 1.6 to 1.75. So we could definitely hold on to it if we do, if we process this from this side first, machine out the uh, studs and everything, then flip it over, hold on to it from here to here, which is in itself, let's see, minus that chamfer, 280,000. So that should be plenty to hold on to. We also want to stick it up a little bit so we can add a little chamfer on the corner as well with a drill mill. And also, if you're set up, so we're going to go ahead and set up on this side right now. If you set up with the tools and I get a roughing program and I'm confident with what I'm doing, beginners usually won't do this, but if you're confident with what you're doing and you're already set up and you get a roughing program, well you could go ahead and post that roughing program and while that roughing program is roughing out all this material, you could still be programming on finishing and adding this chamfer and um, flipping it over and programming this while it's roughing it out because that will take some time to rough out. Well, we'll also go over the different options that we have to rough all this material out as well. So let's move on to the next step which is rotating this part into position and then adding stock. Now for rotating this part into position we have to use our construction views. So these are already pre-made construction views. I hit control 1 which puts me into my top view so I want to go now this this may be a little tricky uh, I've taught a few people on surf cam personally face to face and this is the hardest part for them to understand but once you get it and it clicks it it'll make a lot of sense and we also have a few videos explaining construction views world view and things like that but for now uh, just try to follow along so I'm gonna go to right view and now it's looking in from the right side which if you hit control 5 that'll be the right view and you'll see this little window right here. So I'm going to go Edit Transform. So I'm going to go ER. I want to move it. I don't want to copy it. I want to rotate everything visible 90 or minus 90. So we're going to say minus 90. Keyboard. So I just hit K, 0, 0, 0. And now it is sitting in the appropriate position. So now I'm going to hit control one again and you'll notice that little window that uh, different color tinted window is not in that view. It changes when I change my construction view. So now it's in top view again and we need to make this the back left but also the very top and I'll explain why but we'll go ahead and do this first and then I'll explain. So I'm going to go Edit Transform, so Edit Transform ER, I'm going to move it, and I'm going to uh, move it to a location. I want to move everything visible. Now you don't want to be zoomed in on your part when you say everything visible, because it will accidentally just select what's visible in the screen. Notice how it didn't select these other pieces. So I'm going to go back, I just wanted to show you that. Edit Transform, I want to move to a location of everything visible and then I want to move to the intersection now be careful when you have chamfers like this some people like to select zoomed way out but it might select the inside of the chamfer just take the time zoom in on it click that line and that line now if you pan around you'll notice that the Z level is not correct it's not at the very top of the part but we can fix that here in a second alright first element to intersect and then we want to move it to keyboard zero 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 alright now we have to analyze the distance from the very top of the stud to zero zero so we're gonna hit ZD so analyze the distance and you can either say endpoint or center the center of this circle 
to keyboard 0, 0, 0. So I need to move all of my geometry down that distance. So I'm going to highlight it, hit Control C, hit Escape, Control 1, and now I'm going to go Edit, Transform. I want to move it a distance this time because we're going to move down in Z. Everything visible. And then I'm going to paste my number in there. Then hit OK. Now don't be afraid if it goes the wrong way. Just go, just go back and um, hit everything visible again and type the number in the other direction. So if I accidentally messed up, I just click visible again and you can change that number. Now that may take some time, you might have to play around with it, but everything you need to do to move your part into location is going to be under Edit, Transform, and Move. So this gives you all the different options in moving your geometry. We can mirror it around a line, uh, we can scale it, we can rotate it, move it to a location, a distance, and so on and so forth. So the reason we choose the very back left is because that's the way our company does it. Other companies choose the center. Uh, the reasons I personally do it is I can eyeball the very back left of the material and it's fixed up against the back jaw because the front jaw moves so that's why I don't ever choose the front to make it zero but I always make it the back. The back jaw doesn't move and the left side you could make it the right side. This is just what our company has always done. Now, later in the other operations, you'll have to look at your print and see where your dimensions are called off of. But for the first stop, with just raw stock, in all honesty, it's not going to matter. Unless you have a pre-machined dimension that the print is calling off of that you have to put a stop up against and um, you have to edge find or pick up with an indicator. And we also like to make our finished intersections and top faces R00 because stock tends to change. You'll have one uh, manager order a certain size stock and another one will order it another half inch bigger and if you make that 00 the back left of your stock throughout the next if you're gonna use that program again the stock changes you're gonna have to change your whole program which SurfCam does have it to where it'll update but Sometimes the end mills will not be on the inside, it'll be on the outside of where you select it, and it just kind of becomes a nightmare, and you have to reselect everything. So just keep that in mind. Try to make your zero zeros the final dimensions or intersections of your part, not the stock. Now the very next step is going to be adding stock. This is fairly simple. The very first thing I like to do is create a horizontal and vertical line in the center of my part. So if you are using our geometry, you can create a line by C L E E. Oh, actually, let's go to the center. So we're going to say to the center of here to here. All right, I'm going to hit escape. Now I'm going to CL horizontal, so I just hit H, and in the center of this line. So I just went create line horizontal in the center of that line. So now I have two lines in the center, and then I'm going to measure my stock at this point, which is going to be a little over 100 thou on both directions. So this is 3.4 so I'm just going to say 3.6. So I hit ERCFC, which is Edit Transform Copy uh, Offset something. Hold on. Let's go back. I'll I'll show you guys. So E is for Edit Transform. I want to copy. I want to offset a line and then offset distance. Change offset. There we go. And then you can change your offsets to whatever you want. Now you'll get used to hitting the the hotkeys, which is the most efficient way. All right, the offset is going to be let's say 3.650 divided by two. So th at this point, you would measure your stock, and whatever that number is, you want to divide it by two because we're going to offset the line on both sides. So I hit OK, offset that line there and there. Now we have six inches. So I'm going to say 6.3 is my overall, 
and I want to divide that by 2. Alright, now a quick fast way to trim this. Hit ET, and then I want to go to Trim 2. I'm going to click this line, then this one. And you have to stay on the inside. You can't click out here and then right here. Because you'll see, I'll go ahead and show you what it'll do. It'll trim it just like that, so I'm going to hit Undo. So you want to stay on the inside. And then we are going to delete the two lines in the center. So just right click, delete. And now this has taken me a second because I have to explain everything. But once you get in the habit, you'll see that this really doesn't take that long. Again, uh, all you have to do is as soon as you open a part is fix the layers. Then you have to scale it down if it needs to be scaled, which most of the time it won't have to be. This was just a good opportunity to show you guys if you had to go from inches to millimeter or vice versa that you could. All right, step three is going to be process and plan. Step four is going to be rotated into position. Step five, add stock. And now we are going to color code the lines. Now for changing color. We're going to go to edit color. I like to make my lines yellow for stock for no specific reason. I just think it looks good. You can leave it white if you want. And then go to edit line font phantom line. Yeesh. Phantom line. So there is our stock. Now this is only going to be helpful whenever we're profiling the part. Other than that, it's a, it's a good visual reference to let me know, hey, this is how much I have to profile. You can go uh, and copy this down and then create line points or create line endpoint from that endpoint to that endpoint, create a box around it, but that's kind of pointless. <laughs> And the very next thing we can do is uh, color code everything for masking, and we'll go into masking later. But just follow along, and later you will understand. So I'm going to color all of my holes red, just on the bottom half, or the bottom of the studs anyway. And this is so whenever we create a masking, we can select just the red circles. Now you can do it also by diameter, but because this diameter and this diameter is the same, it would select both of them. All right. And that's good enough for now. The very next thing we need to do is talk about how we are going to program this. That way we know how to set our maskings up. If it was me personally, I probably wouldn't set up a bunch of maskings I would double click each one of these and select it individually and that's only because I've created the bad habit of doing that if you get into the habit now of using maskings it will save you a lot of time in the long run